Hello, so in these next few videos, I'd like to walk us through some additional services. So just as a quick reminder, we left off with the last video of completing a mini hack and we had kind of done the slow and steady, like let's work our way through it one step at a time so we can understand how a internal web server could route its way through a router and then out to the external side. Um, as we go through these next few services though, just as I recommended here on our website, um, I, I, I definitely think there's a certain value to once you've configured it once, well, tear it all down and let's do it again real quick. Um, so that is how I'm going to start. I have deleted my mini hack that I was working on. And uh, right now I'm going to hit create environment and uh, go ahead and create another one. So this is going to wipe out all my machines. Um, I'm, I'm going to get a, a, a new team number assigned to me that I'm going to have to discover what that is. And, and I'm going to take the, the first few minutes, uh, certainly of this video to let's go through configuring everything again, sort of on just direct speed dial, like let's get through it. Um, and uh, this time, you know, I won't necessarily do all the in-depth detailed explanations along the way. It's so, like we got that from some of our previous videos, but nevertheless, we, we still should be able to practice this. We should understand what's going on with our topologies. And after we've got our, our new mini hack that we're cloning out here, uh, reconfigured to be successfully checking in with our scoreboard and all of that, we'll be able to then continue on to some other services and see some more complex stuff, at least beyond the basic requirements of our mini hack. But we can still use this as a really good learning uh, learning environment. So uh, let's kind of continue with just as we would with the mini hack. I'm going to pop open this external guy, uh, machine, the external Kali machine. And remember, one of our most important things to start from here um, was going to be that when we log in as our sandbox user, um, uh, we're going to want to immediately double check with our scoreboard. Like what team am I assigned? What are my objectives? Always kind of keep that in mind as we're looking at this stuff, looking at learning just what are my objectives? What are the things I'm trying to accomplish? So I can go back to our scoreboard at 172.20.0.1. We could log in with our sandbox user, of course, with our password of password and uh, be able to say, okay, hey, I've been randomly assigned a new team number and right now my team number is eight. So the topology itself hasn't really changed, but of course I'm gonna now need to get a different team number. And if I look at the scoreboard, if I look at these services, it's like everything's brand new, nothing's configured, it's all offline. And so let's see if we can make some of these lights turn green. So as a reminder, like maybe I'll start with my router. I'll get my router online and see how I can go about doing that. So I'll go over to my router and say, I gotta get 172.20. My number right now is 8.1 on the external as well as on the internal side. So let's see how we can go about doing that. Okay, so I'll pop open my router here. And as I open this up, we'll remember, hey, this one, this one didn't have the GUI, right? This was all command line. I can log in with sandbox. And then the password, of course, a password. And uh, as I go about configuring that IP address, what I'll also do is take that initial step to say, I'm also going to want to configure this to be a router. So how about I do the zone configurations all at the same time, right? So I could do a sudo vi slash etc slash sysconfig slash network dash scripts ifcfg dash eth zero right we had the eth zero and the eth one i'm running this with sudo so i'll have to confirm my password i wanted to change my boot protocol from dhcp to static i don't have a dhcp server running this i'll say on boot equals yes my uh, IP address, IPADDR equals, this one was the external side, so this would be a 172.20.my number, which is 8.1. And of course, my net mask for this external side should be a slash 16.255.255.0.0. And remember, as from the router perspective, I gave in the router configuration, we could set our zone right here as well. I could say zone equals external. There, all done, all done in one shot. All right, so let's save that. I'll hit escape and then colon WQ. I'll then hit an up arrow to say, well, I don't want to do ETH zero. I now want to configure eight, configure ETH one. So I'll just backspace off the zero on this and say, let's configure ETH one as well. And I'll configure this one very similarly, but of course this one will now be on the internal side. I'll change this to be static. I'll have on boot equals yes. IP ADDR equals, and remember that the internal side is a 192.168, not the 172, dot my number, which is eight. And then dot one, and of course my net mask is, this one is class C, 255.255.255.0, the slash 24. And like before, let's get this set up uh, all prepped for the router, ready to go. I'll say zone on this one equals internal. 
So some of the basics of what we had from an uh, IP configuration and the router configuration kind of all done here in one step. And so if I now restart my interfaces, right, I could do a sudo system CTL restart network, not networking, right? Networking was what it might be on some other machines, but system CTL restart network, that's what it was here on my on my set machine so provided i haven't made any typos it's like yes my ip address should now be brought online and i could uh, try to confirm this here with my uh, uh, with my cali machine right I, I as i'm looking at the scoreboard so if i give this a second to kind of check in it's like yes your router is now online nothing's being routed through to the website yet but hey that, that's where we're headed next right we can go and configure our website um to uh, to be uh, to be consistent with our uh, with our diagram here let me go back to my yeah th this is what i want all right so now that i've got my topology back it's like there in a few seconds i just got my router online and it's all prepped to get the routing actually sending uh sending that through um so why don't i go ahead and do that i can route traffic to this device to my ubuntu device even though it's not uh even though it's not online and ready to go yet. Um, uh, so uh, j just so that I can finish up everything that's necessary here on my set machine. So if you remember, we had these firewall CMD commands, right? You could do something like a list, whoop, whoop, dash, dash, list, all, and then say something like dash, dash, zone equals external, right? That was a way that we could go and check what was our forwarding on our external zone. And of course, I've got ETH zero is there, but there's no forwarding. So we had that long forwarding command. So let's see if I can type that one out now correctly here. We've got sudo firewall dash CMD dash dash zone equals external. And we have dash dash permanent. So then this change will survive a restart. And then we had that add dash dash add forward dash port equals and then we had port uh equals 80 colon proto uh equals tcp colon two port equals 80 colon and our two address two addr equals 192.168. my number which is eight dot two that's where the web server is going to be so let's see if i can run that hopefully i didn't make any typos in that command looks like that ran successfully so now i do a firewall reload sudo firewall dash cmd dash dash reload and i could check my external zone again Right. I can go back here and say what's on my external zone, and I should now be able to see it's like now I've got a forward port. Any traffic that hits port 80 on the router, if it's using TCP, we're going to forward it to port 80 on the internal side, 192.168. 8.2 and part of what makes this happen of course is we have masquerading is currently enabled masquerading is set to yes that's going to be useful for our traffic finding its way in as well as finding its way back out okay so now that we've kind of got that up uh now we can go back to our ubuntu machine right this isn't scoring yet because our service wasn't running but uh, let's go ahead and get our web server configured here in a few minutes so i can kind of make that go full screen and log in with password and uh, maybe if I wanted to make the lights go green in order, um, I could say the next thing I want to do is be able to get this uh, device online and then the website started. So that, that's what I'll look to do next. Um, so we can open up our terminal and say, well, right now, do I have an IP address? Right out of the box, of course, this one did not have an IP address. I'm going to have to go and statically configure one. And we had that netplan file. So I could say something like sudo nano slash etc slash netplan slash that. I just hit tab, right? That 01 dash network dash manager dash all dot yaml. Like that's the file that we want. Yes. And of course, we'll confirm our our pseudo password of just password and here was our net plan file we got to be able to go in here and say how are we going to configure our net plan file remember the spacing in this file we want it to be real consistent with the spacing so we had to say something like ethernets colon go on to the next line do some double space double space again to say what's a couple too many spaces there double space double space i could say ens 18 Oop, my keyboard is getting a little bit of lag here and it's typing out a couple too many letters that's okay though i'll work through it um, after I've got my ENS 18, again, I can kind of hit my double space, double space, double space again to say what's ENS 18. It's like, well, we're going to have addresses for this, A-D-D-R-E-S-S-E-S -S -E -S, colon, and then onto one more line, line up with addresses, one more, and say dash space, I want to be 192.168.8. 
dot two and this will be on a slash 24 24 of course is the internal side and maybe while i'm at it i'll also go and i'll configure my gateway so if you remember uh, when we were doing the router configuration i wanted to do a gateway four and my gateway for this will be the internal ip address of the router 192.168.8.1 so, provided I haven't made any typos in this, so I could do a control X, Y, enter. Let's go ahead and save that and do a sudo net plan apply. And provided that's all good, I could check my IP address now and see, yes, okay, I've now brought this online and, and this should now be available. Now, if we start checking our web server uh, content, right, I could do something like a system CTL status of Apache 2. This was running Apache 2. Apache 2, here we go. And we can see, right, like it, it's not currently active. It wasn't started. Uh, so, of course, this uh, isn't going to be a green light yet. But we could go ahead and start this, right? I could say a sudo systemctl start Apache 2. We didn't need to really do anything to get it started. And by starting the Apache 2 service, uh, I can now go and visit this in my browser. Right? I could visit my own IP address here um, in a browser. I could do something like 192.168.8.2 visit myself and say, hey, here's the content that's currently being served up by my web server. My web server is available because I already configured the port forwarding on the router. Hopefully by now, by the time I go back over to my scoreboard and check in, I should be able to see, yes, hey, your website is actually online. We're getting web traffic that's being passed through, but the content isn't correct according to our scheme. So remember the last thing, of course, we had to do for the mini hack was make sure it says team and then your number inside the actual uh, root of the web page. So I'm going to have to put team eight into that file. Uh, so we can fix that right now. Let's go ahead and do that. I could do something like a sudo uh, nano slash uh where is our content slash var slash www slash html slash then we had that index.html file that's where our current uh, uh root of our page is going to be and i could change this from team zero to team eight for me control x y enter save that that uh, that type of change really should not require a restart we're not changing the service we're changing the web page itself and I should be able to kind of confirm this, that if I reload the page here, it says, yes, this file is now owned by Team 8. So if we give it a second, hopefully here by now, I could check back over to the scoreboard and say, yay, I successfully got the mini hack configured and got brought on my services online in just a couple minutes, right? Let's check the time right now. You can see how if you get good at this, practice this a bit, you can get those forwarding rules down. You can get your IP address configuration down. And then, of course, you can, you can then focus on bigger problems, which is certainly what you're going to want to do on the day of the competition. Be real comfortable with the commands that I just uh, that I just walked us through. Um, now, one thing that we didn't actually bring online was our internal Kali machine. And when you stop and think about it, it's like, well, that's because it wasn't actually scored. We didn't, we didn't actually need that to score any points. But for some of the things that I'm going to do here with the next few services, uh, I am going to want it. So I'm going to want it more for testing. So realize many times you're going to have internal devices and external devices so that you can test what does it look like from the external network? What does it look like from the internal network? So I will take the time to actually go and configure that one right now as we start working our way into other services so we'll get a little bit of a of a of a reminder here how can i how can i log into my cali machine with sandbox and password and then configure an ip address on this one this one didn't have any ip address and remember we're going to make it consistent with our topology i'll say 192.168 my number dot 100 uh, on a slash 24 that will be the goal here for this machine so okay fine let's pop open a terminal and I'll do something like sudo nano slash etc slash network slash interfaces. Remember, this one had the network interfaces file. This one did not have net plan. It's like, okay, so we can go ahead and kind of duplicate this. I'll say auto ETH zero and then I face ETH zero inet static. And of course, our address for this, A-D-D-R-E-S-S, -S, address is going to be 192.168. And then I want my number, which is 8.100. And I could have a net mask of 255.255.255.0. Um, if I also wanted to put in a gateway, I could also go ahead and assign a gateway to this because I do have a router online. So I could say 192.168.8.1 is where, of course, my gateway is going to be. So if I do a control X, Y, enter on this, provided I've got everything uh, typed out correctly, we had our ETH0 interface that currently doesn't have an IP address. So if I restart my service, sudo systemctl restart networking this one was networking 
Sometimes a little bit of graphic lag just causes it to type too much stuff there, right? But if I bring this back online, you'll be able to see, yes, now I do have an IP address 192.168.8.100. And at some point here, I should be able to ping 192.168.8.2, let's say. I could go and ping that web server right now. I could open it up in a browser. I could open up Mozilla and go visit it. And yes, the networking is now consistent with this.